Planet of the Apes. I knew they were working on a movie that had never been done before on that scale. I had no idea it was going to be a groundbreaker like it was. But I know it had been tried before, and it was a flop. The studio was very, very uneasy with it. It never even entered my mind that this was going to be the kind of iconic production it has turned into. Cut up his brain, you bloody baboon! The star of the film was really the makeup. John Chambers he hands me the script and he says, Tommy, it's you and me. Tommy Berman, he's the one that was responsible for telling them to get me, I was available. He said, I'm going to win the Academy Award. It really showed me the breadth and depth of what science fiction was. That's really like the film that started it for myself, and I'm sure almost everybody in my generation. Nobody had ever seen anything like it. That film launched so many people into the direction of doing, and doing makeup. You weren't watching people wearing ape masks. You were watching real apes. This is amazing. I said, these, these are real apes. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm relating to these. They're, they're apes. I think the planet of the apes, they had a theatricality that made them parables of the social problems of the time they were made of. And this script said, you idiots, you keep fooling around and you're going to blow everything up. You know, it was a, a film that made an impression. How could it not? Every time I watch that movie, I still carry a piece of that, right? The worldwide nerve that it struck. The makeups were pretty outstanding. I don't know one makeup artist that has been like, please, play the games. Hundreds of technicians and the largest number of makeup artists ever assembled. I remember it was a big hit, and the people were very excited. And the studio went sequel, sequel, you know, right away. And I have the dubious distinction of being the only actor who got to play three different apes. When you looked in the mirror at the end of this, you couldn't believe it was you. Thinking about actually applying a makeup to one of the original ape actors and being kind of in those same footsteps as John Chambers and Tom Berman, you don't even want to think about it while you're doing it because of, of how much that, that really means to a makeup artist. 50 years ago, I was Lucius, Dr. Zira's nephew in the film Planet of the Apes. After that time, there were many things written about the film and its sequels, but nothing about the people who were responsible for the makeup or the people that were profoundly influenced by the film. This is their story. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Stan Winston School Facebook page for a very, very special live webcast to promote Making Apes, the artist who changed film. This is the ultimate documentary on the original Planet of the Apes as told from the perspective of the makeup artist who broke ground for that, that uh, seminal film in 1968. We are joined today by Tom Berman, Academy Award nominated and multi Emmy winning makeup effects legend, also John Chambers' right-hand man on Planet of the Apes. Say hey, Tom. Hey, here I am. I'm making apes again. Again, 50, 50 years, years later. later. <laughs> We've also got Bobby Porter, a longtime stunt coordinator, also original Planet of the Apes actor. Uh, and how are you feeling today, Bobby? I'm just honored to be here. I'm, I'm sitting here with legends. You're, I worked with his dad when his dad was an apprentice. That's how old I am. That's well, you just dated yourself. I and you only to. look about fourteen years old. Love you. You never <laughs> love you more. And next to him is the director of the Making Apes documentary, Will Conlon. How are you, dude? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having us here. We're really excited to be sharing this project with the world and telling some stories that are long overdue. It, it they, they really are. It's fifty years is, is long enough to wait to hear these stories. I think. Um, so we're going to be talking for the next hour all about this project uh, and we hope you will become a backer during this hour if you are not already. But before we dive in, let's get confirmation that you can see us and hear us in the comments, please. Are we coming through loud and clear? Uh, can you hear Tom? Can you hear me? Hello. Did you hear Will? Hello. Did you hear Bobby? You don't need to hear me. It's okay. It's a madhouse. Oh. <laughs> um, 
because we want to make sure that you're, uh, you're, you're hearing all this. So once we get confirmation, we'll jump in. Yes, we're good to go? All right, excellent. So these are some of the key players. Someone very special who's not here today is uh, Barry Berman, Tom's uh, better half, the, uh, also an executive producer of the project. So hey, she Barry. Is. Hi, Barry. If you're watching in Santa Barbara. And also the entire Conlon clan. I know your whole family's involved. Uh, it's, it's two families that really came together to put this project, uh, and, and then Bobby became a member of both our families. <laughs> the family keeps growing. Yeah. They fed, they fed me once, and now I just won't leave. That's it. No. Yeah. Works for food. He works for food. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, um, time, well, I don't know if I mentioned it, there's only five days left to, to become a part of making sure that this story is told. Uh, we are posting links to the Indiegogo campaign in the comments, so please click on those throughout the webcast. Become a backer if you haven't already. If you're already a backer, I don't know, can they increase their... They can. So Indiegogo, unlike Kickstarter, you can actually make multiple contributions on there. We have had some people who have contributed five times to the campaign because we keep putting new content up there to keep enticing people to come back. So there's some really incredible additional items that you can add on. If you've already bought our Mega Bundle, you can get stuff like... Uh, this is Tom and Barry Berman's personal Blu-ray of Cat People, one of their iconic films autographed by both of them. We only have one available right now, $50, and it's yours. We have the same thing for Howard the Duck. Tom and Barry Berman worked on Howard the Duck. And Tom Berman's incredible, iconic Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is their personal copies. So you'll be getting a piece out of their collection. And they won't be able to watch these movies anymore because they're giving, giving them to you. So that, that shows their commitment. Um, although I hear there's a, a, a new service coming out called Netflix, so you should <laughs> be able to watch your films. What's Netflix? No, it's, it's okay, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Um, all right, as, uh, as Will said, there's some great rewards, and there are a few that we wanted to talk about today. This is for uh, backers at various le levels. Um, I'm very excited about the original artwork by yes. Tom Berman that you guys are... Uh, giving to backers at, at a certain reward level. Did we bring some stuff? We have some right here. Okay. This is Dr. Zira from Planet of the Apes, original artwork by Tom Berman. Right up there. And this is a one of one for the, you can get this for $750. You can also get a signed and numbered print edition of 10 for $250. And the incredible perk on all of these original pieces of artwork, there are a dozen pieces on there, not just from Planet of the Apes, but also from Tom's most iconic films and his personal favorites. Each one of the originals comes with a custom letter from Tom recounting a story of why this makeup mattered to him. So a little personal touch from yes. the artist himself. That's phenomenal. Yeah. We have Cornelius from Planet of the Apes. And uh, later on, I think we're going to be giving away one of the prints of this. Yep, yep. We have that. We have The Devil from The Devil's Reign, one of Tom's cult classics, Ernest Borgnine. Ernest Borgnine in that makeup. We have Mr. David Bowie, The Man Who Fell to Earth, one of my personal favorites of Tom's work. I love that you've revisited all these classic characters that you created, Tom. That's so cool. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the incredible human-dog hybrid. Yes. The, the homeless man bulldog. <laughs> Wasn't he? <laughs> a boxer. Yeah. Was a boxer. A, yeah. Oh, was he a boxer? Yeah. Captain EO, we have Angelica Houston's supreme leader in the Michael Jackson classic. <laughs> and we've got several more available on the Indiegogo. A Man Called Horse. And, uh, and there's also prints available of Dr. Zaius and General Ursus from Planet of the Apes. So that's uh, very exciting to be, to be able to get some original artwork from Tom. As I mentioned, Academy Award nominated for Scrooge. Won how many Emmys? Too many. Uh, I think between Barry and I, I think we have 12. 12? About, about 12. It's yeah. more of a 12. Steve uh, Johnson had something to say about that. Yeah, and we're actually going to be hearing from Steve via video later on. But, but truly, one of the legends in the industry... Um, part of the Berman dynasty. I know, you know, you're both, well, all three of your sons are, are in the industry, yeah. right? Um, and your father was in the industry, he and was. your brother was in the industry, yeah. and your wife is and in And my nephew. And your skip. nephew, yeah. He does music. So, so really, part of the Berman dynasty, and this is your chance to have a piece of it. Um, and for a short time, I was uh, uh, partners with your dad. That's right. Uh, Tom and Stan were partners back in the 70s and very fast friends and came up with a lot of creative ideas together back yeah, then. Yeah, great time, yeah, great time. So 
We have a lot of love for this man. <laughs> um, so this is your chance to get some art by Tom. Uh, there's also something very exciting that we're going to do today, which is auction off an original sketch by Tom of the mutant from Planet of the Apes. And that's what you're seeing right there. So right here, this is uh, an original piece by Tom of a mutant from beneath the Planet of the Apes. Uh, again, this will come with a story from Tom about why this uh, particular makeup mattered to him. Uh, it will be signed by Tom, and this is a one of one, so this is your only chance to own this. We're going to start the bidding on Facebook comments at $100. So uh, bid on there. If you see a bid come in, bid the next amount that you're willing to contribute. And then at the end of this live video, whoever has the highest bid on there, go on our Indiegogo and do a contribution in that amount, and we'll contact you and we'll work out the shipping details. Yeah, so we'll we'll actually do that auction a little later on, but that's very exciting. We haven't done an auction before on one of these. Uh, and we also have some John Chambers makeup, original uh, tins of John Chambers. This is the man who led the uh, Planet of the Apes makeup team and won an honorary Oscar for uh, their efforts. This is some of his original uh, makeup. Yeah, Tom? Yes. You see meticulously labeled absolutely everything. Everything said JC on it. Even the brushes in very fine print will say JC on them. So uh, we've got a limited supply of these. Two of them, excuse me, three of them are already gone. Uh, we have two currently available on the Indiegogo at $400 a piece. When those two sell out, we'll only have two after that, and then those will go up in price to $500 a piece. So right. don't miss out. And those are a part of Hollywood history right there. It's your chance to own a part of Hollywood history. Back this project, and you might. Before we go any further, because there's a few other things to tell you about, please take a moment right now and hit share on this video uh, so that we can grow our audience and raise some funds for Making Apes today. Uh, that's what we're doing here. We're, we're backing this Indiegogo project. This is the definitive documentary on the making of the original Planet of the Apes as told from the perspective of the makeup artists who made it, made it happen. In addition, you're gonna be hearing from legends of the industry about the impact Planet of the Apes had on them. And we're gonna actually hear from one of those legends right now. You guys got Guillermo del Toro mm -hmm. to, uh, to make a nice message for you guys, right? Yes, Guillermo did a fantastic interview for the documentary. He's been incredibly supportive of this project. Uh, we, we both said when we exited uh, our interview with him that he knew more about Planet of the Apes than Tom and I did, you know? And we've been working on this for three years. He's been 50 years in on it. So he really is the master of cinema. and. Uh, He's got a great message. All right, we're going to play that message from Guillermo del Toro now. Hi, this is Guillermo del Toro asking you to support this uh, great project in Indiegogo because it's uh, the memorialization, the enthronement, the enshrinement of uh, a series of movies and a series of makeups and uh, artistic creation uh, that is monumental. And it deserves to be treated in this way. Without your help, it cannot be finished. Without my help, it would have a much less charming accent. So come on, give some pesos to this thing. <laughs> if Guillermo believes in this project, what are you waiting for? Uh, click on one of the links in the comments now open up a separate browser window and go to the Making Apes page. And this is what you are going to find. Um, can you actually share my screen, Jakey? Yep. Um, this is the Making Apes page. Please go there now in a separate window. As you can see, uh, the project is just about 60% funded with six days left, a little under six days left, right? That's correct. So we're we going to be closing out this weekend, so not a lot of time left, and a lot of the perks are going away. We have limited quantities on many of the items. So get in there now. Today is the day to back it if you haven't already. And you're going to see in the right-hand column there lots of very cool rewards that can be yours at, at various levels. Uh, and you're also going to see a bunch of testimonials in support of this project by uh, folks like Leonard Moulton and Chris Hardwick. Uh, we might show you that a little later on. Um, Eric Stone Street from Modern Family. I love him. Uh, again, Leonard Moulton and Jesse Moulton. Is that, that's, that's Leonard's wife. Daughter. Daughter. 
Uh, and Steve Johnson, we're going to definitely play Steve's video um, coming up. And look, you get a signed photo from Matt Winston in Enterprise. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, I knew I know a lot of Star Trek fans. Mm -hmm. I know some of them are watching, and you don't do conventions. So no. I, I went to Matt a few weeks ago and said, would you just sign a dozen of these? And look at them. I mean, I think all eight of those sold in one day. At Even, eight out of ten claims. So there are two more, guys. If yeah. you want a signed picture of me... In Star Trek Enterprise, now's your chance. I told um, them all they'll get Scott Bakula <laughs> to sign it later. Oh, look at that. You get two for one. Uh, we've also got Gino Acevedo from uh, Weta Workshop and Greg Grumberg and a whole bunch of uh, folks are, are getting behind this project. And now's your chance to do so as well. So let's come back. Ooh, sorry, guys, if I gave you a headache. We're going to come back to the wide shot. And we're going to tell you about our giveaways today. This is really exciting. Um, if you become a backer today, or raise, can if they raise their uh, yeah, if you do an additional if you do an, if you do additional, an additional donation 20? of twenty dollars or more, okay. it'll show up as a backing today. Okay, great. So if you guys uh, back today at twenty dollars or more, if you are already a backer and you increase your uh, contribution by twenty dollars or more, you're going to be entered into four or actually five giveaways that we're going to do today. And the first one's going to come up, I would say, in the next fifteen minutes. Um, Here's what we're going to give away. First, we're going to give away a pin. I'm making a pin. Uh, these are limited edition for this project only. Uh, a, the, I call them priceless, but Will says $35 value. <laughs> Designed by Vincent Van Dyke, one of the best makeup artists in the business. And uh, so that will be our first giveaway. Our second giveaway, uh, after that, will be the T-shirt, the official Making Apes T-shirt. And they're all rep wearing those. And by the way, you can't tell on camera, but they're so comfortable. It's like butter. Uh, One size fits all, by the way. <laughs> that is true. They have some. Is, that is not true. Not, not really. Sometimes tightly. Sometimes <laughs> tightly, but if you've, if you've got the muscles, do it. Um, we're also going to give away a signed poster. This is pretty exciting. Why don't you tell us about this, Will? So these were signed at Monster Palooza last year. They are signed by myself, Tom Berman, Bobby Porter, and Lou Wagner from the original Planet of the Apes. Lou was Lucius, Dr. Zira's nephew. And the one who breaks Charlton Heston out of prison towards the end of the film. And you know what? I think we're live right now. I think this needs to be signed by Matt Winston as well because he oh, is the narrator of Making Apes. Oh, my goodness. So All poster right. signed well, by five. Here we go. Let's, let's back up on that for a second. The narrator of what is going to be one of the best film documentaries about our industry that have ever been made he is the narrator. And I'm very, very honored. I really am very honored. We are honored to have him on board. And I, I have to take vocal lessons and make sure I sound good uh, for you guys. And I have to, uh, I think I have to take up smoking to get that deeper <laughs> kind of in a world mm. of apes. Don right? LaFontaine. Something like that? Lock it right there. Lock it right there. That's the spot? Sweet yeah. spot? Um, and then the other couple give giveaways we've got going on is the Cornelius, uh, a signed Cornelius print um, signed by Tom. And finally, we're going to give away a six-month Stan Winston School unlimited subscription today. Wow. So those are the, wow. the five giveaways we're going to do. Uh, the first one will be in about 15 minutes. Once again, if you back this project at $20 or more, you'll be entered into that giveaway, uh, or if you increase your backing by $20 or more. We have someone very special watching. I don't know if he's still watching. Steve Johnson. What? Steve Johnson. Is, I Hi, think, Steve. I think he's watching. Yeah, he's uh, he says, hey, Tom. Hey, Matt. 12. Effing Emmys. <laughs> He's very impressed with your hardware. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I love this book, Rubberheads. One of the uh, it was one of the best reads. I sat down to read it, and I did not stop until I hit the end of it. And I thought I called him and I said, you know, it's like someplace between Hunter Thompson and uh, James Elroy. Yes, you know, it is. I said this is just brilliant. It's a trip. I'm envious um, of him. And he just funded his uh, his second volume. Uh, can't wait. So for that. congratulations. We can't wait for. Yeah. Part two, Steve Good Johnson. Steve. Well done, Steve. Um, and actually, I'm going to play his video. Good Jakey, nice we're, we're going to play Steve's video okay. since, since he's watching. Here we go. You're going to hear from effects legend Steve Johnson why you should back this project. Here we go. Rubberhead 2, go on Kickstarter. This is brilliant. It's Rubberhead amazing. 1 blew me away. Number head 2, number 2 is better. Absolutely. Tom Berman, Tom Berman, the guy behind the making Plan of the Apes, the artist who changed film, right now is doing an Indiegogo. You need to check it out. We're cross-pollinating here. All right. 
and we are back. Okay guys, uh, it's time to learn more about this project. Why on earth are you making this? Well, that's, you know... How did this all start? The, it's really Tom's brainchild, and he can speak to the early well, origins and to, to when I came in. I, I, uh, I live in Santa Barbara, and I go to uh, uh, Santa Barbara City College to take a class in writing your memoirs. And so in writing my memoirs, all of a sudden I started to think about Planet of the Apes, which was a pivotal point in my... It saved my life. It yeah. was the turning point in my whole life. And... I started to think about all the people that worked on that, and they've, no one's ever told their story, the personal story of the making of Planet. What did that do for their careers? Where did they go? How did that change their life? Because it changed mine so profoundly. And uh, then I thought, uh, I thought, geez, I'd love to do something more than just write this. So I knew, I knew Will from the uh, from the different uh, uh, Academy events that they have showings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he also does the films, the festivals, and he has a he and his family have a company that does commercials and local commercials around there. And, and uh, so I was th I'd sat behind him for a long time, and I tapped him on the shoulder and said, "You don't want to do a documentary?" Well, that's been his dream to do a documentary. Mm -hmm. And and you said yes without even hearing what the documentary was about, or you well, mentioned it would be an apes documentary. Yeah, I mean, I had I had been looking for a documentary project. I've I've done a few documentaries, been in the Santa Barbara Film Festival and elsewhere, but I was looking for a film about film because I love film and I want to tell stories about what happened behind the camera. I think a lot of the stories behind the camera are just as interesting as what wound up, you know, in the movie theaters. Absolutely. So, um, you know for, I don't know, two years or so, Tom and I would sit in the theater and for the half hour before each screening, we'd talk this movie, that movie. Oh, you worked on this, you worked on that. You knew the people that worked on this. You met these people. And I heard all these stories and, and he kept saying, you know, all these great makeup artists, they're starting to go away. We're starting to lose them. And um, I think three years ago now, you came to me and you said, uh, you know, Planet of the Apes is going to turn 50. Do you want to do a docu? And I cut him off and said, yes, 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 and yes. Yes, please. Uh, and then, you know, my first thought was, well, wait, aren't there a ton of documentaries about Planet of the Apes already out there? So I started doing the research. I started watching the ones that were out there, like the great one that Rodney McDowell made right mm -hmm. before he passed away. And all these incredible docs that tell the story of the Apes franchise, the most that makeup is mentioned in any one of them is about 30 to 90 seconds. That is a travesty. Yeah. That is why that, I mean, of course, you can't take away from the performances, the director, the writing, but what made that movie stand apart was the apes. Yeah. So how do you not discuss how that all happened? Yeah, and they're great. They have got interviews with John Chambers in them, usually like one quick shot where he talks about the makeup process. Yeah. But... There were what forty-five makeup artists working on the film. Yeah, there were there were less of there were certain key people, and um, at the end of Planet of the Apes, when when we finished shooting, John Chambers gave there were six of us that got these little um, well, this side here here these little, oh this is from little, John yeah wow well, we got them in gold and then there were about fourteen or sixteen more that got them in solid silver. Mm -hmm. And that was his thank you for it. So there's that group that was kind of the stock makeup right. artist on the show. Right. And then we had probably close to 60 people working on it on the big days with all the people in the cornfield and the apes and putting masks on and doing all that sort of well, thing. Well, that movie was all about world building. They created a, a convincing world. You know, it wasn't just the apes. It was the architecture. They really, it was such an ambitious project. Uh, and, and the makeup, without you know, the makeup, they, you had nothing. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know when they were shooting the very first test of the uh, ape house, mm -hmm. well, it looked like the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a head of Barney. Yes. And they, they walked out, and each one of the, the, the test apes walked out in front of the camera, and they'd walk out, and they'd turn, and they'd blah, 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 animate their face to see what they could do and see how close they could come. And then right at the last, I came out going, "Hey, Barney, oh, it's me, Fred Flintstone." No. And I look over at Bill Kreber, who's the Art director, you oh, can see no. the color go out of it. Oh no! <laughs> you know, Your set looks like the in Flintstones. That, in that moment, I realized I made a terrible mistake. Oh, oops! I, yeah, I embarrassed. <laughs> I said, Why did you do that? And I said, well, I thought it was funny, but it, now I realize it wasn't funny. He said, My God, my this is this is my presentation. Right. I said, I am so sorry. Well, 50 years later, it's finally yeah. funny. But at the time, he I'm sure he was. Letters. I'm sure he does. You I'm didn't sure kill his career, by the way. No, no, yeah, he, he did all right. Did, so well. that's why he didn't respond to my email when I asked him for an interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't forgotten Tom. Yeah. 
Well, those are, I mean, that's the kind of thing you're going to be hearing about, what it, what it was like on that set. And you guys have gotten some interviews already in the can with a who's who of makeup artists yeah. in this industry, true legends, mm -hmm. in addition to uh, the remaining living members of the team. So can you shout out Absolutely. some of the artists that people are going to hear from in this documentary? So from the original Planet of the Apes. Uh, actually, we can go to the... Uh, yeah, you can scroll down. You can see pictures. We're going to go back that. to that Indiegogo page, and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to try and not These go These are the too people fast. who are so profound. Tell me when to stop. Uh, coming up, keep going. Um, there you go. Right Here there. we go. So right away you see, of course, Tom, and then by, by great fortune from our good friend Scott Essman, who is also in the documentary, he is allowing us to use footage of an interview that he conducted with John Chambers on his 75th birthday. So even though John has been uh, departed for a while, he will have a presence in this documentary. Uh, we have Dan Strepek, who was department head at the time. We have Maurice Stein, who we sadly lost earlier this year. Uh, we have Frank Griffin, who worked on the sequel. Uh, Bob Seidel, who worked on the films, was also part of the Argo mission, along with Tom and John Chambers. Uh, Daryl McIntyre, Ed Butterworth, Fred Blau, Ken Chase, Werner Kepler. I mean, uh, these are all iconic names. These are the people who shaped the, the last 50 years of makeup. And then you have the makeup artists who were influenced by Planet of the Apes. Rick Baker, Vincent Van Dyke, Greg Nicotero, Howard Berger. And what I love talking to these people is that Every single one of them has the story about the first time they saw apes and how it affected them. Mm -hmm. um, you, Matt, are in there telling us about how Stan was so deeply affected by Planet of the Apes. Stan Winston would not have become Stan Winston without that film. Yeah. That film inspired him to pursue a career as a makeup artist. He told me that. Yeah. On the set of yeah. Pumpkinhead. Oh, I'm sure he did. We, we sat and talked about you know, projects that we had done prior mm -hmm. to, and he said it was the apes that got me to where I am now. That was it. Yeah. That was it. And of course, the story wouldn't be complete without having people who actually wore the makeup. So we are very fortunate to have both Lou Wagner and Bobby Porter, who are just, you know, incredible additions to have in there. Here we go. Uh, the perspective that they give from actually wearing the makeup is stunning. We have filmmakers who are influenced by it. We have John Landis, who not only was a male boy on the f uh, second film, but then he was uh, Bobby's human slave in the fifth film. And uh, we've got Richard Donner, Joe Dante. Who's that there on the bottom left? That Matt handsome, Winston. that man? That, I think that's me. Wow. What um, a good looking man that is. Really, and then really photogenic. Incredible <laughs> film historians like Leonard Maltin, Alex Ago from USC, uh, Joe Madalena, who is the world's premier prop auctioneer. He talks about the value of apes memorabilia in today's world. And then Scott Essman, who uh, has really been a great support on the project. Again, he's letting us use his John Chambers footage. He also wrote a phenomenal article in this current issue of Scream Magazine that just dropped the other day. Uh, so that just came out, uh, Scream Magazine. There's a great piece that he wrote for us in there. So uh, thanks to So, Scott. and what's great is the, these interviews are already shot. Yes. That's the yeah. cool part. I mean, this thing is happening. This thing is happening. The question is, will you be a part of it? All this footage has been shot. Mm -hmm. You have so many great interviews. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Um, we have a question here, actually, that's right along these lines. Um, this is from Madison Spencer. Uh, Hi, Madison. Hey, Hi, Madison. Madison. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, Madison asks, Will, you've spoken with amazing directors uh, and also makeup artists for this project. And this is for you, Tom, as well. And Bobby, if you can answer it. Do you have any fun stories to share? Is there one that stands out uh, oh. about the Apes franchise that you guys would like to share? Well, I think the timely one right now is Guillermo del Toro because he is, you know, he just won the Academy Award for Best Director. His film Shape of Water, I think, is a masterpiece. That's the film. That's a film they're going to be talking about 50 years from now, just like we're talking about Planet of the Apes today. Uh, Guillermo, actually, his first film, he tells us, uh, it was a stop-motion Super 8 film. He uh, borrowed his dad's Super 8 camera and took all of his Planet of the Apes action figures and he made stop-motion films with them. And he would use thimbles of alcohol for pyrotechnics. And he would, <laughs> and he would melt their faces to create like disfigured apes. And, and he would put on these shows and make these stop-motion films. So, you know, without Planet of the Apes, there would be no Guillermo del Toro today. He did it in his closet, too. Yeah. That was his little yeah. film, film studio? His yeah, little closet? His closet. He, he, had he charged almost turned it down. <laughs> he charged his little brother a few pesos oh. for, uh, for admission. Oh, and my gosh. Yeah, it, it just shows you the, the, the reach of Planet of the Apes. It's just stunning. 
Uh, uh, people like Richard Donner yep. talk about, you know, when he was really early in his career, he was friends with Zanuck, and he was invited to the first screening, and he talks about that moment when you see the Statue of Liberty that, you know... No spoilers! Hey, if they're if they're on here, they have to have <laughs> Yeah, if, if you haven't seen it, it's been 50 years, yeah. we're sorry, we're spoiling the ending for you. <laughs> uh, but he says, you know, there's the moment where before you've seen it and the moment after you've seen it, yeah. you can never forget that. That is true. One of the best twist endings yeah. ever. Yeah. In the history of film, so good. And Rod's based on a story by Rod Serling. Where would he yes. write the screenplay? Rod Serling uh, wrote, wrote several drafts of the screenplay, and he is co-credited on the screenplay. Uh, I believe the final uh, the final draft is him and another writer. Uh, but the Statue of Liberty was his Michael idea. Michael Wilson. I mean, uh, Michael Wilson. There you go. Uh, the Statue of Liberty is pure Rod Serling. Yeah. I mean that is that is a great Rod Serling ending. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the film, that's all we're gonna say. Go see the movie. What's wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to start gearing up for our first giveaway, guys. Uh, all of the funds we raise are to benefit Making Apes, the artists who changed film on Indiegogo. So if you become a backer today while watching this for $20 or more, you will be entered to, uh, to win one of these giveaway items. Do we have any numbers yet, Will? Uh, we uh, do. We're starting to get some contributions okay, in. Great. Uh, the campaign just broke 30000 so thank you so much for your support. And the one thing I want to note also on the contributions is that doesn't have to be just a straight cash contribution. You can select another perk for $20 or more. So we have these great autographed photos of Tom Berman with John Chambers. These are the iconic shots from the Makeup Lab. We've got a limited supply of these left at $20 a piece, so you can go on and pick up one of these. Uh, we have autographed photos of Bobby Porter with um, uh, uh, Roddy and uh, Natalie Trundy, the family photo from, mm -hmm. uh, from Battle for the Planet of the Apes. So Ace. you'll get those for sure if you back at $20. Guaranteed to get those. Guaranteed, and you can select that right on the page. If you switch over to the page now, Jake. Uh, right here on the page, if, if you select either of these $20 uh, rewards, you've got the Tom Berman signed photo. You've also got, where is it? The other one right above there. Right here. Wait, you there's two in, different ones. You get down into the $35 range. we got okay. Bobby Porter. We've got the photo of you from Enterprise. So Bobby is a little more expensive than Tom. <laughs> uh, 30 bucks for Bobby, because, you know. Is that true? Yeah. I don't know why. I guess uh, above the line, below the line. Yeah, I, guess <laughs> I don't know. I played three um, different characters. That's so why. I guess he I and Roddy, you're, spe you're special. Yeah. He and Roddy McDowell are the only people to play three different apes in Planet of the Apes. Okay, that's why his picture is yeah. worth uh, more than yours. Yeah. Well, Ten dollars per ape. Well, How many apes have you played? <laughs> Still, <laughs> it's your private life. This is um, the first makeup artist I ever met in my career in 1971. Wow. 1971. You started with the best. Yes, I did. It only goes downhill after meeting Tom Berman. <laughs> you, right? can't, you can't imagine the number of makeup artists that I've worked with over the years who have all said to me personally, straight to my face, if it were not for apes, I would have gone into an entirely different career. Yep. Hundreds of them. Let me, let me just throw in a little thing here. We're talking about 35 and 20 and my picture, psh, that's not worth it. Here's the deal. $50. Five zero is a decent meal for two. Okay, I mean, fifty dollars. Depends. Fifty dollars gets you. How much? Depends you on what part of town. If you live in San Francisco, <laughs> right. not so much. But fifty dollars gets you into this movie. That's it right. It gets your name at the end credits of a film that I personally believe will be required viewing at every film school that calls itself a film school. And there it is. There's the perk. For 50 bucks, you get a special thanks credit. You will be immortalized in, uh, in this documentary. And the streaming copy. So it's basically a two-for-one deal in there. So please back it at, at really any level. But at $20, if you back it at least $20 today, you're going to qualify for, for one of our giveaways. And I think we should do them. We keep teasing them. Let's do a pin giveaway. Do we have enough Absol numbers to do absolutely. a, a now, drawing? We just sold another Matt Winston signed photo. So there's only huh. one left. Woo Get your Matt Winston signed photos, guys. You better get on there before it's gone, because there is only one left. That's really exciting. Crewman Daniels is uh, Crewman Daniels going is back hot. into the temporal rift. All right. Well, thank you very much for your support, whoever bought that picture of me. All right. Uh, so uh, We're going to do our first giveaway. Do we have a number spread that we can yeah. give Tom? So, uh, Tom, without looking over here, give me a number between 315 and 322. 
15 and 322. That's that's a hard one. Now. And we're going to be giving away the pin. So this is for the pin. How about 318? 318. Mr. Jeff Don has won a pin. Jeff Don. Jeff Don. Oh, Jeff. You're a winner. All right. This is a legend who won. Jeff Don is actually an Academy Award winning uh, makeup artist who won actually wow. with Dad for Terminator 2. And uh, Jeff, we can't believe you're watching right now. Terminator 2 featuring Bobby Porter? That's right. This very same. I think it's the same Jeff Don watching. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jeff. We used to ride uh, uh, trials together. Wow. Oh, Jeff. oh you motorcycle rider yeah. as well? Jeff, cool, man. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jeff. You're going to win a Making Apes pin. Thanks, All Jeff. All right. You're helping make this movie. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, our next giveaway. It's so cool that Jeff's watching. And Steve Johnson was watching. Wow. The who's who of makeup are watching this thing. Uh, wow. Um, the, the next giveaway will be the t shirt. Once again, it'll be the Making Apes t shirt. If you want to qualify to be added to the drawing, please go ahead and back this project for at least $20 during this webcast, or you can increase your previous contribution by $20 to be entered. So that's the first giveaway. How exciting. Hey, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Daniel Montgomery, who just contributed $250 to the campaign. Daniel! Nice! Nice job! It sure helps Ooh. to be related to a great person. Thank you to my cousin. Oh. Ah. We love family nice. around here. Uh, okay, we have a few questions from backers. Um, this is from Dean Preston. Hey, Dean, thanks hey, for Dean. joining us. Hey, Dean! Oh, quick, quick before you ask the question. Dean is the reason why I'm here. Hi, Dean. Yeah. Dean. Thank you, Dean. Dean awesome. put us in touch with Bobby when we were in the early stages of this film. So we are eternally grateful to Dean, who is also the uh, editor uh, or co-editor of Simeon Scrolls, Planet of the Apes fan magazine, which just did a great feature on making apes. Check it out. And there must be a website for that. So where do we find that? Uh, if you go on our Indiegogo page and look under the Press for Making Apes section, there is a link to the digital copy of this issue. It's a free magazine, so you can go online and find it. Well, Thank you again, Dean. Here's what, uh, here's what Dean says, because he did say something. He says, hi, Matt. Please pass on my regards to Will, Tommy, and Bobby, especially Bobby. Many happy <laughs> returns for Thursday, Bobby. Oh, my Lord. Is that your birthday? It's on IMDb. I'm toast. <laughs> oh, no. Well, 30 years young. No. Come on, a little higher. Happy, a little happy birthday. birthday. Oh, gosh, do you? Happy no. birthday, do you? Gosh, no. All right, preemptive happy Thank birthday you. in the comments, please. Wish uh, Bobby happy birthday, guys. Thank you. Uh, Francisco Clark Sanchez uh, has a question. I back the project right now. Thank you. Uh, do I have to make an additional backing to enter the giveaway? If you backed for at least $20, which he did. Which you did. You will be entered into these giveaways. So yes, you're good to go. Thank you so much, Francisco. Thank you. The rest of you, be like Francisco. Please back this project during this webcast. Do it right now to be entered into these uh, giveaway drawings. I'm actually familiar with Francisco's work. He's a fantastic artist in Texas. Yeah. So this really shows you the, the reach that this documentary has. People all over the world have supported this film. It's just incredible. We've had support from New Zealand, from Japan, from Germany and France and Italy. I mean, the entire planet has come together for this project. Well, most, I think there are very few franchise titles that everyone knows. Yes. Everyone knows Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Well, we, I were mean, just, we were just everyone. commenting that Planet of the Apes is one of the first franchises that really put out that, that bulk of content that you see nowadays with like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You get three Marvel films a year. Well, think about it this way. James Bond would be average three years apart. Star Wars was three years apart. Star Trek was two to three years apart. Planet of the Apes came out with a movie a year for five straight years, mm -hmm. which is really a And feat. then spun and, it into a TV series. And then a TV series yeah. and an yeah. animated series. And then decades later, it's been revived and yeah. it's massive blockbuster yeah. all over again. Exactly. So this franchise isn't going anywhere. And now's your chance to be a part of preserving the history of this franchise. Uh, we have another question here from a backer, Jonathan Stewart Wood. Thank you for backing the project. Hey, Jonathan. Uh, guys, I was wondering, will the Blur DVD combos no, all, all... Oh, sorry, Blur. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> the Blu-ray DVD combos uh, be signed at all? Will they be signed? Hmm. Well, that's a, that's a good question. We had a, uh, a special offer in the Mega Bundle that... For where, every, where is that? I'll, I'll check it out The Mega the Bundle's at the 150 level. Um, okay. Or excuse me, 135. 150 Sorry for the... Shipping. Uh, so every 10 of those... You just passed it. Sorry. Okay. Here. There you go. So right there. Um, every 10 of those uh, will randomly be selected and the poster will be signed. 
Uh, here's what I think we should do, uh, and this will just be an added bonus for everyone who's already done it. Let's do the same thing for the Blu-rays. One in every ten of them will uh, will have autographed. Oh, very cool. Yeah. That just happened. That decision was made right now while watching. Uh, all right, we have another question here, and this is for you, Tom. Um, by the way, please share this video right now. Take a moment, use your mouse, click it. Click the share button, or if you're watching on mobile, click the share button with your fingertip. Not if you're driving. I'm, I'm doing it right now. Not yes. if you're driving. Share this video, let your friends know that they have a chance to be a part of movie history and, and preserve uh, the, the stories behind the making of the Planet of the Apes. Share the video. All right, Andy Mauger asks a question. Andy. Andy. And he says, probably this would be mainly for Tom, but how does it feel, Tom? How does it feel? This is like a, we're going to have an Oprah Winfrey or Barbara Walters moment. How does it feel to be a part of a groundbreaking franchise that stood the test of time for half a century? And what are your thoughts on these new prequels? So first part of the question first, and then we'll talk about the prequels. Well, in case he tries. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could zoom in. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I knew right from the beginning, Andy, that we were onto something. I didn't know how big it was going to be or what it was going to be, but I knew it. I felt it. It was it, the magic and the way that I got there to that to that position that I had of assisting John Chambers was so magic. And you know, my favorite saying is, "You want to make God laugh, just tell him your plans." Because I realize it has nothing to do with you. You're on, you're on a road, and just got to take it. And so, you know, when I first saw the saw the film uh, in its rough cut, I'd never seen a rough cut before. And uh, John Chambers sent me over to see it, and I came back. I was devastated. I was just, I thought, my God, this is such a piece of crap. Why? Well, because it was missing scenes. Oh, right, right, right. It was missing effects. It had temp music to it, and the color, it wasn't color corrected or anything. Mm -hmm. and, and they hadn't done ADR yet, so mm -hmm. everyone's so, 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 so. talking yes. through the makeups. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I was afraid to tell John, says, well, what do you think? Do you like it? And I, yeah, oh, great. It's gonna be great. I was, I was devastated. Oh no. You know, but then when I saw it in the theater and it's opening in Westwood, I went, "Oh my God, we we've done something here." And so, yeah, it's a, uh, um, well, it, it it means so much to me that I have to tell. I had to tell this story. I had to either write it or now we're doing a documentary, and I wanted to tell the inside story of these people and the little stories that you don't you don't hear or don't know mm -hmm. of and haven't read about. You know the things that happened that were funny and sometimes tragic. I find the, that, uh, the, doing these stories, it's, it's, the, it's the moments that brought you to your knees and the moments of absolute jubilation are the only ones that count. Everything else is just fill. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and what about the prequels? What do you think of the the, the, this take? It's a whole new well, approach. It's all digital, obviously. Okay, I, I love the makeups in, in, uh, uh, in the Rick Baker did. I think Stan should have done it. But, uh, yeah, uh, but and and Rick Baker's brilliant, and and I thought they were gorgeous. But you know the, the movie, yeah, it just it, it just didn't work for me. It didn't, mm -hmm. The story didn't work. The the, whole, the the setup didn't even work for me. So when I've seen the, what I've seen in the uh, CGI apes, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. But I don't get the little nuances that actors bring to it. The little mistakes. The little moments mm -hmm. that they bring the the, the 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 spinning of the uh, of their thoughts while they're mm -hmm. doing it it g gave it something in the first movie that I don't think any of the other movies really were uh, quite because of the magic of the first one being the first one but all the ones with actors in them I thought were uh, I, I like I enjoy them better than I do the CGI well, I'm not surprised. You're a practical effects guy. Yeah. I understand. Your heart is with, with rubber and, and glue, and I'm with you. Um, yeah. Not to take away from the amazing, amazing work by, by Weta Workshop and oh, Weta Digital. And, it's perfect. Well, it's Weta Digital, and Gino Acevedo has been helping out with that a lot. And it's, Hi, it's absolutely beautiful. But we are, I think we're more practical effects people here. Uh, we, we agree with you. Um, and there was just something about, there's always something about the first. It's hard to top the first. Mm -hmm. um, and that is what this documentary is all about. If you're just joining us, we are here to raise funding for Making Apes, the artists who changed film on Indiegogo. It is only, what, six days left? Less than that at this point. We're, to to we're become really a backer. There, yeah. uh, uh, but we are now over 60% funded, and you guys can help, help us get all the way to the finish line uh, by Sunday. That's when this is all over. 
So please, please back today while you're watching, open up a new browser window, go to the Making Apes page on Indiegogo. You'll see links in the comments and please become a backer if you haven't already. And when you back this project, you're also backing something grander than just the film even because we have shot over 100 hours worth of interviews with all these people. You saw the, the list of people on there. Um, we talked about more than just apes. We talked about their inspirations, what got them into makeup, what were some of their favorite projects outside of apes. So our grand plan is after the documentary itself is finished, we're going to probably start a YouTube channel or a Vimeo channel, and we're going to just throw video clips up online. We're going to say, you know, let's have this story about this actor working with Marilyn Marilyn Monroe, or this, excuse me, this makeup artist working with Marilyn Monroe, or this makeup artist working with Clark Gable, and, and these are stories that are going to live forever, and, you know, I, th I think it's just a great service to the next generation of special effects people to know where they came from. Absolutely. This will be a must-watch, I think, uh, film, and I love that you're putting out all that extra material, yeah. because it does need to be told, and already some of the artists you interviewed have passed. Yes. So yeah. thank goodness you've got a chance to sit down with them and hear these stories and preserve their memories. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my, my, my favorite thing when I first started makeup was sitting with the old makeup artist, I think Clark Gable, and as he said, Elvis Presley was a makeup artist, was a friend of mine, and I would listen to these wonderful stories about how they made films mm -hmm. on with, a, uh, with a, you know, with Ford's big westerns, and, and you know, and they would, they, they didn't go to hotels back then, they all went out to a camp. Oh yeah, they had tents. Oh, they all, how fabulous! The whole crew lived in tents in, in <laughs> Jackson Hole, Wyoming, someplace, and they had the booze and the and the and the food and everything was brought in. But they that's how they lived through that whole yeah. shooting outside like that. And I, those stories were just mesmerizing, and that was part of my impetus for doing this because those stories are gone. Yep, I remember them. Yep. but who else does? Yep. yep. And you guys are preserving them, so yeah. thank goodness. And you all get to be a part of this. If any of you out there are currently a film student or have aspirations to become involved in the film industry, this should be required viewing because there's never been anything done quite like it. We have Academy Award winners watching us right now. Mm -hmm. How humbling is that? We also have... Uh, Adrian Rigby, we have some the younger generation as well. Adrian Rigby is watching. I'm assuming you're in the UK right now, Adrian. Adrian is a brilliant makeup artist. Uh, his work's in Game of Thrones, many other things. And he says, uh, hey, Tom, hey, Matt. I backed already, but just backed again to get a T-shirt. Sweet. Um, and he says, and this is so very true, there is no makeup artist that that can't say that apes inspired them in some way to get into doing makeup for a living. This is so true. Uh, this is one of that handful of films that, that inspired careers and launched careers. Truly. Uh, so thanks, Adrian. You're another testament to it. All the way in the UK, you know as well, this, this is a worldwide phenomenon, uh, Planet of the Apes. We have another... Uh, Thank you, Adrian. Great, what is this? Great job on Game of Thrones, by the way. Yeah. I think yeah. it's going to be a hit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All it's right, here, here's a good one. And you know what? This would be great for any of you to answer in the comments. But, and after we ask this question, please keep the questions coming, by the way. This is fun to hear from you. Um, we're going to give away something else, okay, okay. Cool. after this question. So if you want to be uh, entered into the next giveaway, which will be for an Apes t-shirt, get them while their supplies last, uh, bid 20 or back for $20 or more, or increase your previous backing by $20 or more. Here's the question from Eric Erickson. Um, Eric. Why are the themes in Planet of the Apes still relevant today? Great question. Oh, yeah. You can uh, answer in the comments if you want. What do you guys think? Well, I think, you know, the original Planet of the Apes has some incredible social commentary in it. We did this great panel at Monster Palooza a few weeks ago, and um, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't on the panel. It was Guillermo that suggested in the interview that, you know, the Statue of Liberty, spoiler alert, uh, is not just an arbitrary landmark. You know, it could have been the Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. It could have been any famous world landmark. But Rod Serling chose the Statue of Liberty because it was supposed to demonstrate the fact that humans destroyed liberty and that if we don't take care of ourselves, we're going to destroy this fragile planet and somebody else is going to take over. So I think that that theme resonates just as much today as it did in 1968 at the height of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Tom? 
Well, I think it was also uh, racially motivated mm -hmm. in a way, in a sense, you know, that, uh, that because of all the racial problems that we still have. But even back then, it was it was at a transition time racially, mm -hmm. and I think it was demonstrating on uh, the, that there were these classes of mm -hmm. apes, and now there's these human beings in reverse, and yeah. how it feels to be. It is interesting that even within the ape community, yeah. they had that the orangutans were on top, and you had the gorillas on the bottom, you had the chimps, everyone's divided. Yeah. Well, everyone's here, divided. Here, you're really you're telling a, a deep story with a fantasy twist yeah. Yeah. to make it enjoyable to watch. Here's Go the ahead. really funny thing about that. When we called lunch, the chimpanzees sat together, and the orangutans sat together, and the gorillas sat so together. Funny. I was not going to eat with a gorilla. Well, and that, even it, it works in the cosplay world, because at Monster Palooza, yeah. I saw all the gorillas hanging together. Yeah. They weren't hanging with the chimps or the orangutans. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, so there's a possibly why it's relevant because we still, fortunately, I mean, unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world, and so these same these same problems still exist. And rewatch Planet of the Apes if, if you want to see one of the best expressions of uh, the problems of our society. Mm -hmm. It's also fun to watch. Yeah. Um, I think it's time for another giveaway. Sure, all let's right. give away a shirt. We're going to give away a shirt. Uh, Take it off. Give us a new <laughs> number spread. We, we can't pick 318 again. 318 is Because that was Jeff. I've got that marked down on there. All right. So we are... Drum again. roll, please. We're going to give away the Making Apes t-shirt. T-shirt. Uh, Bobby Porter, pick a number between 315 and 327. 327. 327 is the number? Uh, Lisa James, you just want... Well, you purchased a t-shirt, so you're getting two. Two t-shirts right. for Lisa James. Thank you so much for your support. I see you've contributed a couple of times since we started, so thank you. Thank you, yeah, Lisa. Thank you. As keep we were, as keep we contributing, Lisa. As we were walking into this building this morning, a woman stopped us and said, cool t-shirt. Yeah. And now you get two of them. Yep. These um, were the hot commodity at Monster Palooza. People were going crazy about these. I love my Making Apes t-shirt. I have not taken it off since Monster Palooza, <laughs> and I'm sure you can smell that. <laughs> I was going um, to comment. I just love the shirt. What can I say? Guys. Now's the time to back this project. If you haven't done it already, it ends on Sunday. That is the deadline. There are just a little over five days left to be a part of the Making Apes mission. Uh, where are we in terms of funding? Over 60%, so still have time to get there. I and we just crossed 61%, so let's keep it going. Keep going, guys, please. And there's some fabulous rewards uh, for backers at various levels. Um, obviously, the original art by this gentleman, Tom Berman, uh, John Chambers' right-hand man on the Planet of the Apes franchise. We'll actually show some of that while I'm going through the others. Here's some of the original art. Um, here, let's just, I'm going to pass them back to you. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Um, these are all by Tom. These are uh, pencil illustrations of some of his uh, famous characters. Look, I'm completely covering Tom. Huh. Um, this is from Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the 1970s remake. What year was that, Tom? 77, I think. 77. Uh, this is David Bowie, Man Who Fell to Earth. A brilliant makeup by Mr. Tom Berman. This is his rendition. He said he's from another planet. I would buy it. I with, did. With that guy. I was no question. Love David Bowie, and he's definitely an alien. Uh, this is Ernest Borgnine in the Devil's Reign makeup. Huge wow. cult. Okay. And I love that you did this, Tom. You went and re... What was it like to revisit these characters? Oh, it was fun. It was fun. You know, it, it's, uh, um, it's just all out of memory. Yeah. You know, it, it, that's the way that, you know, that inspired me. Well, it all and, came back to you, clearly. And we have more than we have even here. We've got more on the Indiegogo. We've got a uh, man, uh, man Called Horse, and we have um, uh, John Forsyth and Scrooge. Um, and then uh, we're going to be putting up tomorrow, Tom just completed another one of um, the, uh, the horrors from Scrooge. They were the uh, Lost Souls. The Lost Souls, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, guys, this is an Academy Award nominee, multi-Emmy multi winning, makeup effects legend, and you can own original artwork by him uh, if you back at, at those reward levels. Uh, we also have Cornelius uh, from Planet of the Apes. This was pr he was portrayed by Roddy McDowell, mm -hmm. legend in his My own father. right. Yeah. And Z Zira? No. Zira. Zira. Dr. Zira. Dr. Zira. Dr. Zira. By Kim him, Kim, Kim Hunter. Hunter. Mm -hmm. That's Kim Hunter. Such a cutie. I, I love I kiss you, Kim. but you're so damn ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know good. if it really resonates two dimensionally, but sitting here watching these go by me, it's amazing how 
brilliant the work is, yeah. my friend. You still uh, got it, Tom. You still got it's it. It's three dimensional. It, this is a really, really, really cool perk. So if you can afford it, and they're and they're treasures in the art world too. Because if you look at uh, motion picture memorabilia, you look at the auctions mm -hmm. that that come along. Very rarely you see some original Tom Berman production art come come across the auction block, and they go for great amounts of money. I, I believe some of your um, Cat People stuff recently sold at two thousand dollars per sketch. So uh, this is really an incredible deal for the uh, film art collector and I'm gonna, as well. We're actually going to bring up the Making Apes page now so you can see some of those uh, reward levels. And again, you get that story from Tom. That's a customized personal story for your eyes only. You know, it's not going to be published anywhere where he's going to share you his, personally. his memories of why that film and that makeup mattered to him. So wow. you're going to own some one-of-a-kind artwork if you uh, back at these levels. And of course, you will be making a very important contribution to this documentary. So there's really no lose here, guys. Uh, and then the invasion art. So all the art we just showed to you is available at these reward levels. So please check those out. Um, also, sorry guys, we're gonna be auctioning off. Wait, we should do that. I think we should start that going. We'll let it run for a few minutes. Yeah, right? let's do it. We're gonna let it run until the very end. Exactly. We're okay. also gonna do an auction. So right here you have from beneath the planet of the apes, this is the mutant uh, that uh, they find a living under New York City's remains. This is an original by Tom Berman. He will hand sign it and it'll include a story. Uh, so we're gonna start this, the, the other artwork is $750. We're gonna start this at $100. That'll be the reserve. Uh, yes. we, we won't want it, we're not gonna give it away for less than that. So if you want to win this original sketch by Academy Award nominated makeup effects artist, multi Emmy winner, Tom Berman, uh, well, we have no focus there. If you go That's on our okay. Facebook page, we posted a high-res picture of it. So this is original art by Tom. Write in to the comments uh, what you're willing to pay for it. We're going to do an auction. We're going to start it right now. The minimum is $100. If you would like to be the first bidder, literally all you have to do is write $100 in the comments. And the rest of you, if you'd like to outbid that bid, you can go ahead and do so at any increment you want to. At the end of this uh, webcast, we will pick the highest number. That person will then go to the Making Apes page, make a contribution, and get whatever rewards come with that contribution, plus you'll get this. Wow. So the auctioning starts now. If you would like to be in on it, it starts at $100. So just write that in the comments. Um, what else did we want to uh, show? Yes, it's okay. time for another video. Uh, Leonard Moulton, yes. one of the... One of the what? 46,069. <laughs> what does that mean? Nice try. All right, we're going to check out a video by Leonard Malton. You guys know his, his movie reviews. Uh, Leonard Malton is one of, the, uh, one of the biggest reviewers in Hollywood history, and I'm going to show you his video. Sorry, guys, I'm taking a while to scroll down here. I should have done this before we brought up this page. Where's Leonard Malton? Tell Coming me I'm almost stop. there. All right. And then we also want to hear from Gino Acevedo. We'll play that one as well. One more. There. Uh, oh, it's... Yeah, we already played Steve's. Here we go. This one? Yes. Okay, here we go. This is from Leonard Malton and Jesse Malton. Hi, guys. We're here at WonderCon, which is the best possible place to be when you care about... Making, making apes. apes. I'm Leonard Malton. And I'm Jesse Malton. And we are enthusiastic about this documentary because it really needs to be done. It's being done by the right people at the right time. That's right. And uh, you should support it because I promise you'll love it. So, so there you go. The Maltons, the Maltons support this project. You need to as well. And while you're right there, if you look to the right, we've got those great signed photos from Lou Wagner. We only have uh, four of those left available, but that's a great shot of Lou uh, having some fun in the makeup lab with John Chambers, and Lou kindly signed those for the campaign. And Lou, as a reminder, played Lucius in the original uh, Planet of the Apes. And then we also have, and I'd like to play it right now while we're thinking about it, a video from Gino Acevedo, who's over at, at Weta, and... Uh, obviously had, had a lot of involvement in the, the new Planet of the Apes. So we're going to play that as well. 
Hello everyone, I'm Gino Acevedo, and I'm here to talk about this amazing brainstorm project between Tom Berman and William Conlon, Making Apes. I am so excited about this because we're going to be able to see some really rare footage that we've never seen before, and to see John Chambers doing his masterful craft. As you can see, I'm a bit of an apes fanatic, so I'm incredibly excited about this. When I saw this film as a kid, this is what made me want to get into what I'm doing today, special makeup effects and visual effects. So please, everybody, please do what you can to help support this amazing project. It's going to be incredible. So please go to Indiegogo and please help support. Thank you very much. Lunchtime. <laughs> and I love that shot there uh, over his shoulder. That was a picture of his daughter that he made up into Dr. Zira. Oh, how he's, great. He's got this corner in his office. He sent me a lot of great pictures of it. It's kind of his ape's corner. That's so fabulous. As, as we've been saying over and over, every makeup artist in the world was inspired by this movie, so I'm not surprised. Uh, Jake, you can bring us back. Okay, so guys, uh, we're going to do another giveaway, okay? It's going to come up in, and I'd say, like three minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't yet backed, now's your chance. Those of you who've already backed for $20 or more during this webcast, you're entered, you could win. Uh, what we're going to give away is the signed poster. Um, so let's bring that up. All right. get, get everyone excited about that. That'll be our next giveaway. That'll be in about three minutes. Previously signed by four, now signed by five. You've got two original Planet of the Apes actors on there. You've got uh, Lou Wagner, also Bobby Porter. Uh, you've got Tom Berman. You've got director of the documentary, Will Conlon. And you've got me, for some reason, Matt Winston, I guess. Narrator. I'm narrating the, the documentary. That's why. And we're going to give that away in about three minutes. So if you've become a backer today during the webcast at $20 or more, or increased your previous backing by $20 or more, you could win that. Uh, unless you've already won something today. You can't win two things today. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. And speaking of autographed posters, uh, for those of you who are uh, interested in autographs, we have a, a major treasure. I mean, this is a one-of-a-kind, well, 61-of-a-kind piece. But uh, in the course of this documentary, uh, we realized the amount of people we were going to get involved in it, so we wanted to have something that we could give to each person who contributed their time to work on, uh, to give us interviews. So uh, right at the beginning of this, before we did our first interview, uh, Tom and Barry's son, Max Berman, who is an incredible artist, um, did a piece of Roddy McDowell, uh, a uh, black and white digital art piece, uh, and we had a lot of negative space on it so that we could have every single person involved autograph it, and we printed 60 one high high quality copies of this and every single person involved has signed it this is the most comprehensive piece in makeup autograph history we've got 19 academy award winners uh more oscar nominations emmy nominations and emmy wins than you could possibly count and um, can you go up and point out some names please? yeah absolutely well, some of the i don't think i can get around there but uh right at the top you've got v neil and bill corso you've got michael key founder of makeup artist magazine uh, that's Bob Seidel, I think. No, excuse me. That's, um, I can't read who that is. That's uh, Greg Nicotero there. Uh, we've got Mike Elizaldi, who just created The Robot on Lost in Space, the new Netflix version. We've got three-time Academy Award winner Greg Cannon. We've got Howard Berger, Tom Woodruff, and Alec Gillis. We've got Ed Butterworth, Lou Wagner, Matt Winston, Vincent Van Dyke, Rick Baker, seven-time Oscar winner. Uh, we've got Steve Johnson, Mr. Rubberhead. We've got Dan Strepek, uh, department head for Planet of the Apes. Then we've got our directors right there. We've got Richard Donner, John Landis, Joe Dante, uh, Ken Chase, who did uh, Dr. Zayas's makeup. We've got Guillermo del Toro. We've got Michael Westmore, iconic Star Trek makeup artist. Leonard Maltin, one of the greatest film reviewers of all time. Bobby Porter, Werner Kepler, Frank Griffin, Maurice Stein, who we sadly lost a couple of months ago. Then in gold there, you've got Tom Berman. And then underneath, we've got the artist of this piece, Max Berman. We've got Barry Draban Berman, and then myself. We're so a lot, a, of, a lot of Guillermo. autographs on there. This is, a, th this is one of the uh, most comprehensive signed items I've ever seen in, in the makeup effects world, honestly. I've yes. never seen so many makeup effects artists sign one thing. This yeah. is a now, brilliant idea. Now, these are not... For the fans, what's the deal? So we had just enough left over that we are offering a, a very limited quantity of them. Uh, one of them has actually already been picked up by one of our top backers uh, for, let me get this exactly right on the campaign, for uh, 2400 I believe is the number we have up. Nice. 
For $2,400, you can own one of these. That actually also comes with a mega bundle of all of our merchandise for Making Apes, and your name will appear in a large text credit as a special thanks for your support. Uh, or then you can also do our top tier uh, package, which is $10,000, uh, but you also get an original prosthetic from 1968 film as well. Uh, this piece is really, it's just stunning when you look at it. As an autograph collector myself, I, I'm blown away every time I see it. And we've got room for a couple more signatures on there. Uh, we're going to have uh, our Oscar-nominated composer on there and uh, uh, probably a couple of other names by the time we're done with this. So this poster is pretty cool. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to have to swipe this one from you before you leave the building. Well, you're getting I'm one. Getting oh, I'm you're getting on one? it. I'm getting one? <laughs> if you oh, sign so it, cool. you get one. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So you can be among the uh, ranks of Matt Winston and Tom Berman. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't read the, the signature, there is a printed um, key. We have a key. That we have on the site. And it will come with the key, and then you see right under it, we've yeah. got all those pictures of everybody signing it. So we've got the provenance there. Yeah. Uh, and then Guillermo's So right all under legit that. signatures. Mm -hmm. So this is just one of many uh, of the incredible uh, rewards at, at certain backer levels for this campaign. And down a little um, bit is Guillermo. And there's Guillermo signing it. There's Guillermo signing it. He loves Planet of the Apes. And there's the two lovely yo yo young ladies who couldn't make it today that are with That's the, right. Hi, Barry production. and Harleen. Hi, kids. There's Tom's lovely lady, and there's Harleen. That's Will's mama. And a fantastic producer. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys, it's time for our next giveaway. Okay. We're going to do it. We're going to do the signed uh, poster. All right. So, guys, we've been doing giveaways all day. We only have a few left. Uh, we have the signed poster, not this one, but that one. Uh, and we also have a Cornelius print coming up. And then finally, or actually we'll make the Cornelius print the final thing. So next will be a six-month unlimited subscription to Stan Winston School. So right now, we're going we're gonna to pick a winner for this signed poster. Remember, we only have a few things left to give away. If you would like to be included uh, in these drawings, all you have to do is back this project today during the webcast for $20 or more. Or if you've already backed, increase your backing by $20 or more. So give us a new spread so we can pick a winner for the sign. All right, poster. Matt, you're going to pick this one. Oh, I'm excited. Give me a number between 315 and 330. 315 and 330. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm going to go, you went high last time. I'm going to go, let's say 322. Mm. 322. I'm sorry, Lisa James, you already you won. You can't win twice. You All can't right. win twice. Give me another one. 321. 321 is Jeff Roberts. Jeff Roberts. Jeff Roberts, you just won this poster. Congratulations, wow. Jeff. You're the wiener. Thank you, you Jeff. You are the wiener of this poster. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Backing has its perks. Congrats. Congrats, Jeff. All right. Uh, remember, we're only doing two more giveaways. So. Back this project if you haven't already. Also, please take a moment right now to share this video so that your friends can join in on the last, uh, we'll go for about 20 more minutes. We'll, we'll, we'll end at 12.30. So we have about a little over 20 minutes or a little under 20 minutes for this webcast. So please let them know to, to tune in. Should we remind people about the auction yes. that's yes. going on? Do we have any bids yet? Any bids for the auction. Not All yet? right, let's get our first bid in on this. This is, I mean, this is a collectible. This is. You do not get a Tom Berman original piece every day. And if we don't, we don't get a, a bid for $100 or more, we're not getting rid of that today because that is, that yeah. is worth a lot more than $100. Um, yeah, Balaz and Dimitar in the comments, if you could uh, encourage people to bid on this uh, sketch, original sketch by Tom Berman of the mutant from Planet of the Apes. Uh, that will be um, going to the highest bidder today. All right, next up is a question. Uh, this is from Jason Cope to me. Hey Matt, do you have behind the scenes for the ape makeup tests? Stan did for the Tim Burton film that you could post on SWSCA. Well, actually that, that film was being developed by Jim Cameron and then um, it was uh, Oliver Stone and then Chris Columbus. Tim Burton was not involved in the one that Dad did the test for. And yes, we do have tons of behind the scenes and still images. We've released a little bit of it already, but there's more to release, so we will do that in the future. Um, as we've mentioned, every makeup artist in the world was inspired by this film. My father was no exception, and in the late 90s, he 
was this close to doing his own Planet of the Apes. Oh my God. And it was so beautiful, the makeup he created. Uh-huh. And, and he and I actually got to wear those makeups for some tests that were done. And uh, uh, it was a shame that, that that version never got made. And Rick Baker went on to do it with Tim Burton. And he did a fine job. Rick, that, Rick's, that Rick's makeup, no such. I believe, is on the blog section. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah, it might be something. So if you go to stanwinstonschool.com and search Planet of the Apes, you may find something, according to Stan Winston School co-founder Eric Lidoff, but I don't know if he's telling the truth. We also have the complete um, Monster Palooza panel on our Facebook page, at Making Apes Documentary, where we talk about that and we show it on screen. We've got a great segment that's where you right. talk about it live. Yes, so that's right. So you, you can, can go on, on there and check see that as well. Check it out there as well. Check it out gorgeous, there as well. Gorgeous, gorgeous make that. Yeah. Apple wants to find it and pop a link. He knows where it is. Yeah. Yeah, if you could find that, B, and put a link in the comments, that would be awesome. It could be on Facebook. Thank you very much. A um, few more ape stories I want to ask, but if you are just now tuning in, we are here to raise funding for the ultimate Planet of the Apes documentary, Making Apes, The Artists Who Changed Film. Uh, this is the untold story behind those revolutionary makeups, uh, as told by the surviving makeup artists and also by uh, luminaries in the industry who were affected and impacted by Planet of the Apes. And we really need your help to, to fund this. There's only five days left, and uh, we need all the support we can get. I have, I have a question, um, Tom. You're kind of responsible for John Chambers getting involved in Plan of the Age. true. John Chambers won an honorary Academy Award for his work on this, but he wouldn't have done it without you. Can you, can you tell that story? Well, I love that story. John Chambers was working at uh, Don Post uh, on, a, on a wax museum project, making a big, big gorilla and a big King Kong gorilla and a bunch of actors, which they were all done in latex with <laughs> glass eyes and whatnot. So my, they hired my father to help him because it was he had John had never done anything that large, and my father had done monumental sculptures <laughs> and whatnot back east. And so my father called me at, uh, I was working in a factory down in Newport Beach, and he called me to ask me if I had any vacation time. And I said, well, I don't know why. And he said, well, because I want you to come up here and help me sculpt this gorilla. So I went up there and helped him. I uh, was helping him sculpt this gorilla. They were paying me $5 an hour, more money than I'd ever had in my life. <laughs> and, uh, and I was doing something I loved to do. And so they asked me to stay on. And then one day a makeup artist came to the studio and he uh, named Irving Pringle and he wanted a quart of latex. Nobody else was around. So I said, you know, just take the quart and, and I'll, I'll replace it with a, what I got. And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a makeup artist. He told me about an apprenticeship at, at five. Well, I told John Chambers about it the following morning when I was supposed to make a call. And John said, don't call him. I'll call him for you. And the week went by and I was so disturbed because I didn't hear anything. And I asked John if what happened. He said, oh my God, Tommy, I forgot. Call him. He called him right away. And then I said, well, tell him to come right now. Well, I was making a splash mold. You know how that is. I had plaster all over me. I said, oh, yeah. I can't go like this. And he said, no, you, you go like this because they're going to make up their mind today. So I interviewed with, uh, with Ben Nye. He told me there were 96 applicants for that apprenticeship, plus his own son. Mm-hmm. And he said, so I don't know what to tell you. So I went home very, feeling very dejected. And that night he called me and, and uh, told me I could start my apprenticeship Monday. So six So months, 96 applicants, how many were selected? Just one? Just, just two? Yeah. Because I wanted to make a new idea things with my father. And I, Dick Smith, was the old was a lab man there. And he was going to retire. And they wanted somebody to take over his position. So I had that advantage. So six months later, I'm cleaning up after Ben Nye in his, in his office, and he comes in with the department head, assistant department head, and this old Dick Smith, and they're really, they're really disappointed because they're going to do this movie. They never, they didn't think it was possible. They had done tests on it, and uh, the, the, the studio was, certainly wasn't convinced it was even possible. And, um, and they said they wanted Bud Westmore from uh, the Universal. The Westmore yeah, dynasty? Because he had done a movie called List of Andrew Messenger. But I knew that John Chambers had done that work because I'd been to his house. I saw his photographs, and, and he and talked about it a lot. And so I, he, I, I just burst out in a little Tourette's moment, and I said, he didn't do it. And they said, who didn't do it? I said, Bud Westmore. And they said, yeah, he did. He was a department head. And I said, no, John Chambers did the actual work. 
I said, get him on the phone. So I called him, and he said, I'm, Tommy, I'm busy right now making Spock's ears. And I said, they want Bud Westmore because he did, did you, uh, a list of Indian Messenger. I heard John go, ugh. <laughs> I'll be right over. <laughs> Following Monday, his little Buick Skylark pulls up as I'm headed for the lab out of the department, and he waves at me. He said, Tommy, Tommy, it's you and me. And he holds up the script to the Planet of the Apes. How cool. Yeah. You, you, you've got John Chambers on that. That defined his yeah. career. Uh, yeah. And it was all thanks to you. Yeah. You know, he might have ended up there anyhow, but I'm sure. I give I'm, you full I'm, credit. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Too. I give you yeah. full credit. Maybe but I'm but Westmore probably would have come to do it because he yeah. had to recognize that it was. Well, thank goodness yeah. you, uh, you encouraged John to get over there um, because movie history was made by, yeah. by you, him, and the rest of the team. And yeah. hundreds of other extraordinarily successful makeup artists that's right. began their career because of this kismet. Yep, that's right, that's yeah. right. And I can't really think of many films that had that kind of impact on the makeup field. Yeah. Um, I look back to, obviously, um, Jack Pierce's work on the classic Universal Monsters. That certainly yeah. set, a, set a new bar. Um, but I, I think it wasn't until Planet of the Apes that it happened again, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, after probably, Jack Pierce. Probably Wizard of Oz was a similar sure, scenario, sure. but... Yes, in terms of the but scope, the makeup, the, the makeup scale. people got no credit whatsoever right. for That's it. Right. It, wasn't even, it wasn't even mentioned. It wasn't That's even right. a possibility. Mm. No, you're right, you're right. Planet that, of the Apes that, was so overwhelmingly makeup-driven mm -hmm. that it made the Academy stop and say, wait a minute. Yeah. And that's why they gave him a special award. Now, wasn't Jack Don Jeff's? On, Jack on, Don on, was uh, Jeff's, Jeff's father, on, who, on Wizard of Oz. who was the department head at on, MGM, who yeah. did Wizard of Oz. I, are you still watching Jack? There's another yeah. little. And his his dad, uh, his dad was a, uh, uh, um, was Bob Don. That's right, Jeff's third and, generation. Yeah, and Bob Don was a uh, uh, an apprentice for his dad at MGM. And Bob Don was also a war hero, shot down twice over Germany, and walked out amongst all those Germans. He just walked. I said, how did you do it? He said, I waved at him. I waved. Hello. 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 Yeah. You be the same. Yeah. I'm one of you. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. All yeah. is well. <laughs> and then West Don and I were apprentices together at Fox. He was the senior apprentice when I started. And he left, and, and uh, another dynasty. A lot of Dons. And a lot of Dons. A lot of, a lot of Bermans, a lot of Dons, a lot of Westmores. A yeah. <coughs> couple of instances. <laughs> Can I uh, uh, ask for a story here? One of my personal favorites. Yes, please. Um, you know, Roddy McDowell had a very unique way of using the prosthetics, mm -hmm. uh, the physicality that he brought to the role. And there's only one other ape who, uh, who was able to do the same thing. Bobby, how did that happen? Um, We've had a couple of conversations earlier today about just being young and doing things you wouldn't normally do if you were older because you figure you're wiser. Sometimes just the, the brashness of youth pays dividends. And on the first day playing Cornelius, I noticed that Roddy had this really expressive face, much more so than anybody else. Um, and I just at first attributed that to the number of experiences he'd had in the past and how well he was able to do this. And my makeup artist, Jimmy Phillips, God bless you, um, said well, there was a secret about how Roddy could make his face more pliable and more mm -hmm. expressive. And I said, well, okay, I'm his son. I should be able to have the same expressions. And he, oh, no, 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 no. And Jimmy was very young and I believe he was still an apprentice at that time. And I said, well, if Roddy says it's okay, can I have this secret? And he said, sure. So the second day of shooting, I walked up to God and said, Roddy, um, Dad, <laughs> can I do the same thing with my makeup that you do with yours in order for me to look more like you? I am a prince after all. And he kind of rolled his eyes and said, okay, tell him. And all it was was, for any of you who have had any experience with foam latex, the bridge of the nose was the thickest part of the appliance, mm -hmm. just for all the, the creative reasons. They had taken, and who was Roddy's makeup artist? Freddie Blau. Freddie. Would go in, and because Roddy would listen to great opera while he was getting his appliance up 
put on and he had his own separate room so that we all didn't have to listen to opera all three hours of it. And Freddie would go in and, and cut the inside of that appliance and make it very hollow mm -hmm. in the ridge of the nose. Mm -hmm. So if, if you look carefully, you see Freddie doing a lot of this mm -hmm. and that's all it was. It was just something to make him unique. And Got so it. on the third day of production, I showed up on the set and I just kind of went and he went, okay, you're good. Matched. You were, you, were in front, you were father and son and, and after I was too, that moment. I was too frightened to actually do it on camera because it was his signature move, but I was able to. Now, how old were you at, the, at that time? Um, I had done another appliance job for my very first job in the industry, and Dan Striepeck, who was a part of this project, and John, mm -hmm. and you, sir, and a number of others. Um, I got hired because I was small, and I was doing a film where I was going to be stunt double for a young man named Eric Shea, who went on to do Poseidon Adventure and a number of Disney films. And I wore an appliance made by John, sculpted mm -hmm. by John, mm -hmm. under the supervision of Dan Streepak, um, where I looked like the 12-year-old boy. At that mm -hmm. time, I was 19. So when we did Apes, it was probably a couple years later, because we did Ace, Eli, and Roger the Skies. But you were in your, tw in your early I was 20s. probably 21. Okay, but yeah. you had the presence of mind to show up on set and go, I need to be this kid's son. I need to find some of the inflection and the, the, the facial expressions he's come up with. I mean, and that's was, just brilliant. It was my first job as an actor. I had no clue what I was doing. Well, you asked the right questions yeah. and uh, you are forever immortalized in the Planet of the Apes. think of. That's right. You get these brains on you. That's why he wound up being in some of the greatest films of all time. I mean, go to Bobby Porter's IMDB page and look at this guy's career. It's the most, I mean, the two of them, the three of them. Go to all of their pages and just check out the films that they have touched. I mean, you talk about Six Degrees as Kevin Bacon. It's these three guys. These guys have shaped Hollywood history right here. Well, I, I don't know if I've shaped the Hollywood yeah, history. Yeah. Maybe these two have. Well, and I, you guys are getting a chance to shape Hollywood history by supporting this project. Yeah, you're next. And, and that's what, we're, what you're here for. You guys actually are needed very much so to support this project. So... Please do it. That's why you've been watching. We you just got, got our first contribution mission. from Denmark. Oh, Denmark. Yay, Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. All right. I think it's time for another uh, giveaway, guys. And then we're going to do... Uh, it's going to be a six-month Stan Winston School subscription. We gave away the poster already. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a number. And actually, this will be Tom selecting again. Uh, give us our number spread, and whoever wins is going to get a six-month unlimited subscription to Stan Winston School. That is going to give you all pass access to hundreds and hundreds of hours of instructional content by the leaders of the makeup effects and character creation industry. So This is huge. I hope huge. you win. I, I'm familiar with all the schools, and I always recommend that I go to you because this is really honestly the best information you could ever get as, a, as, a, as an up-and-coming makeup artist. We like to think so. And, oh, we, and what, what we do is we, we bring only uh, the top working uh, professionals into the faculty so that you're learning what the pros are doing. You're not learning from someone who hasn't been in the industry, um, but you're, you're learning the real deal stuff. So let's see who wins. All, All right. right, 315 to 331. Tom. You get to pick. 329. 329? That's a good number. 329 is Michael Keats of the United Kingdom. How do you spell that? Um, C-E-A-T-E-S. -E Congratulations, right. Michael. Michael, good in the job. UK. Good move. Good uh, move. Balaz Foldesi, one of our social admins, please uh, communicate with Michael privately so we can get his email address and get him set up. Please. This is huge, That's Michael. Thank great. you very well much. Wow. We have one more giveaway coming up. So this is your last chance to qualify to be a part of the drawing. And that is going to be the uh, a signed print, limited edition print, of Cornelius. Uh, and this is drawn by Tom Berman. This will be our last giveaway of the day. Uh, that is actually a $250 value on the Making Apes page. So you can actually win it for free, or not for free. You have to actually donate uh, $20 or more to the campaign to qualify for, for being entered into that giveaway. So that'll be our last giveaway, and that's coming up in, we're gonna call it five minutes, okay guys? Because we're coming, coming to one. an end here. Since you guys have requested it, I am going to show you a little excerpt uh, from the Stan Winston Studio 
behind the scenes documentary of my dad and I in the Stan Winston Planet of the Apes makeups. Uh, so there we go. I'm just going to play that for you guys. It's 20 seconds. This is getting our makeup removed. We had some fun. Look at your, look at your, when, it's only, when you open your mouth, wide with a wide expression. Oh, that's actually, yeah. chance to actually articulate uh, those makeups. Unfortunately, uh, Tim Burton went with Rick Baker and those makeups were never seen, but Dad did get to use uh, that same technique for the the Ceres character, the villain in Galaxy Quest. So oh, wow. go ahead and rewatch Galaxy Quest. The Ceres character used the same technique, although it worked a bit better in these makeups. Um, so there it is. The try to story. find Matt in the movie. Yeah, try and find me. Yeah, I, I do appear uh, very briefly. All right, guys, we are closing in on the last five minutes of this webcast. If you have any questions for Tom or Will or Bobby, please shout them out now or forever hold your peace. But most importantly, please open up another browser window right now and go to the Making Apes, the Artists Who Change Film page on Indiegogo and become a backer of this project. This is your uh, last chance. There's five days left to be a part of it. So we want you to do that. A um, over, little over 60% funded, but the campaign ends on Sunday. Were you about to say something, Will? I got, we just, we've covered almost every single thing that we have to offer on the campaign right now. There's just a couple more that I'd like to mention. Uh, for those of you who like to not just apply makeup, but wear it as well, we have an option for uh, your photo of you as a character from Planet of the Apes to be featured in the closing credits of the documentary. So not only is your name in the special thanks section, but you would also get your Apes cosplay included. We've had some incredible people support the campaign in that regard. Uh, they've sent in their photos already and uh, we've seen some amazing ones. The funny thing along the way, too, is we've also seen a lot of makeup artists share their photos of the apes' makeup that they did when they were younger. If you go to that uh, tier level uh, on the campaign, uh, the photos that are on there, the demonstration photos, this, I don't think I've told anybody this since we started, mm -hmm. the one on the right is actually Michael Key, founder of Makeup Artist Magazine, and the one on the left is three-time Academy Award winner Greg Canham. Wow. Those are the makeups that they created when they were, I believe, in their early 20s or late teens. So um, that's at the $100 level. So you get your name featured, which is a $50 perk, but then for doubling that, you can then feature your, uh, go up just a little bit, Matt. Show me where. Next one, I think. Uh, one more. There you go, right there. Here? So that, uh, the one on uh, the left is Greg Canham, the one on the right is Michael Key. Uh, and um, you can have your picture of you as a Planet of the Apes character of your choice. You can be a, uh, an ape, you can be a gorilla, a chimpanzee, you can be a mutant, you can be uh, Charlton Heston. All you need is a, a, a you know, piece of animal skin. I love this reward that you're, you're giving people a chance to show off how they were inspired by apes. What a fun, fun idea. And you're so immortalized. If you're, if you're a makeup artist and you want your ape uh, to be in this film, in, in during the credits, you can actually do that. So please submit your, your, your best ape makeup. And, and what else do you and have And lastly, I think these are the last things we haven't covered yet. For the magazine collectors, I know there's a lot of people who collect Fangoria Magazine, which is going to be coming back after an absence later this year. Mm -hmm. They're coming back. Uh, uh, this is a 1982 uh, feature of Fangoria, all about uh, Berman FX, uh, specifically cat people. Uh, this is Tom's personal copy. It's been signed by Tom and Barry. They actually met on this film. And um, that's the film that started it all. We have this one for $50 on the campaign. And then we have a uh, 1982 uh, Cinefantastique uh, profile on Cat People that is signed by both Tom and Barry as well. These are their personal copies. So you're getting uh, memorabilia right from the source. They're giving away their DVDs. They're giving away their magazines. You guys are going to have anything left to watch or read at home. I have a kid. Oh, that's true. I hope you yeah, be interested. <laughs> that's it. That's it. If you have a kid, you don't yeah. need any of that stuff. <laughs> Keep you endlessly. We have three of them, and they're all old yeah. now, though. 
Well, and speaking of... They do that to you. They do. They they turn turn on speaking you. of uh, Tom's son, uh, I don't think we've even covered. In the documentary, we have two incredible seg segments that demonstrate the makeup. Uh, towards the earlier part, we have a segment where Tom and his son Robert actually uh, recreate the makeups in the same way that they were done in the 1960s using injection molds and, and uh, foam latex. Um, and that's then, so cool. And then at the end of the documentary, we come full circle by having Tom and Vincent Van Dyke, who he mentored and took over Berman Studios, they actually take Lou Wagner and put him into makeup using today's process. They make him an old ape. Uh, using today's process. Yeah, it's, it's today's process, but it's still in the tradition of the of the film. But yeah. instead of spirit gum, you're using telesis. And, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But now is that is the, the new ones is silicone makeup yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now you, you say it. Yeah. 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 You you like the foam? No, I love foam and spirit gum. I, 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 that was the greatest invention, silicone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If I walk on a set and somebody opens up a bottle of spirit gum today. I just turn right around back. and run. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, I spent gallons of... That is the smell of my childhood. It is. <laughs> Spirit gum. It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and honestly, it's one of, one of my earliest memories of, of realizing that what Dad did was awesome was uh, in kindergarten, there was a, um, a uh, job day or whatever, you know, where you bring your parent and they talk about their job to <laughs> oh the my class. God. Well, my dad is going to come talk about being a makeup artist. And how we did it was by applying um, some Roddy McDowell appliances to me and wow. transforming me into an ape. He had worked on one of the film sequels and the TV show. He would go in and day check, and he had a couple appliances. So there I was being transformed, spirit gum, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. um, wafting into my five-year-old mm -hmm. nostrils, mm -hmm. brain damage, good times. Um, but I remember the fascination Every kid in that class was glued to what was going on, and well, you were I, glued to what was going on too. Yeah, yeah. literally. And and then we walked around the school, and everyone came out of their classrooms to watch this ape walking by. So, this film also has major memories for me um, nice. growing yep. up, yep. and that's why we're here to support it. And thank you all for for being here and watching today, uh, and helping us raise money for this project. We have. Another giveaway coming up. I think we should do it. Just do it because it's already 1136. Um, and that and that is going to be the signed print um, of Cornelius by Tom Berman. This is a signed limited edition of 10. We only have 10, 10. available and several of them are gone already. And we're going to give it away right now. Uh, this is one of them. Now, if you missed out on all these awesome giveaways today, do not worry. There are so many incredible rewards at various levels uh, for this campaign. So there's so many opportunities to get a hold of, of Hollywood history, memorabilia, signed artwork. Don't you worry, okay? So even if you're, you're tuning into this and the live event's already over, don't worry. Making Apes page has everything you need, so go there. But we are going to give this away now. So give us a spread. All and, right. Uh, and Bobby, since Tom did the last one, why don't you pick this one? Cool. You got this, Bobby. 315 to 331. 315 to 331. Let's go with 316. 316 is... a good number. Mr. Fred Blau. Fred Blau! Wow. From the original Blau. Planet of the Apes. I didn't see it. Honest, I didn't see it. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, Fred. Fixed. It was fixed. Fred, no, he gets to... I'm sorry. He's actually one of the original makeup artists. On Planet of the Apes. Wow, Fred, wow. thank you. Just one. Doesn't that make you feel good? The That's... man who invented the uh, telesis, the, uh, I mean, the, telesis the, the, in, the illustrator colors. There you go. Wow. Fred Blau is watching. Um, thank you, Fred. Congratulations, Fred. Thank you're gonna, you, Fred. You'll probably get a personal visit from uh, yeah. from someone since you... Oh, no, no, he moved to... Fred, Idaho. you live in Idaho now. Oh, wow. That's right. He's a retiree now, other he, than the convention You'll shows. get yours when you get one of these as well. Yes. <laughs> Thanks wow. for supporting, Fred. You rock. Thank you, Fred. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, oh, someone is. What is that? That's a weird thing. I don't know. What just happened? Yeah, that's weird. All right, I'm going to check. Uh, okay, we have a final, um, a final comment from a fan, someone watching. This is from Francisco Clark Sanchez. I would like to say that I'm appreciative of the de development of this film. As an artist, I think this is a great contribution to the film industry and a humbling chance to show off all the hard work that a makeup artist goes through to bring life to a character. Thank you all. 
Wow. wow. Thank, Thank you. You, you get hey, it. Francisco. You get it, Francisco. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. exactly right. Thank you. Uh, as, as Will said towards the beginning of this webcast, he uh, started searching for Planet of the Apes documentaries when, when Tom initially suggested it. And although there were a few things out there, none of them really gave any time to telling the story behind these groundbreaking makeup effects. So what you're doing is really important, guys. Thank you. Really and thank important. you for being a part of it. Yeah. I couldn't think of a better person to be our narrator because not only are you uh, an integral part of it, but it brings Stan into it, and he has a, a great place in this story. He, he uh, as we said early on, would not be Stan Winston mm -hmm. as, he, as he became known without that, that film. He would have done something else. And so, I would not be a filmmaker if it weren't for Stan Winston. So it's all, but it all comes back to Planet of the Apes. How crazy is that? Yeah. That's all right, where it guys. All started anyhow, isn't that's, it? That's where it all starts. Apes. Yeah, it all yeah. started. <laughs> right. We all started with apes, literally. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. Okay. <laughs> so you just did. You see the evolution chart. It just <laughs> goes up, up, and then mm -hmm. goes back to Roddy McDowell. So thanks again, all of you, for uh, joining us today. And for those of you who jumped in and became backers, thank you so much for your support. Thank you, thank you everybody. If you're watching this later on in the day and you missed the live webcast, don't worry. You can still back the project until Sunday. There's five days left to help bring these folks to the finish line. Uh, so please back the project. Once again, you've been joining us here at the Stan Winston School Facebook page. I'm Matt Winston, co-founder, and I am uh, joined by uh, Academy Award nominated, Emmy Award winning makeup effects legend Tom Berman, Bobby Porter, stunt coordinator and original Planet of the Apes actor and the director of the project, Will Conlon. I would also like to thank uh, Jake Borowski, who has been uh, running the feed. Thank you, and Jake. our social media admins who've been with us, Balazs Fuldesi and Dimitar Dimitrov. Thank you guys for, for helping out in the comments. Uh, most of all, thanks to all of you uh, for your support, and we hope you'll continue to support over the next five days. So uh, without any further ado, um, go making apes, right? Let's All go right. make apes. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.